वेलकम बैक टू माई चैनल एवरी वन आई एम अनन्या योर होस्ट एट द अनन्या द सुपर वोमन ब्लॉग एंड टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू जॉइन एन अमेजिंग लेक्चर सेशन एट बी आई टी एम सो लेट्स गो एंड जॉइन आर टीम सो वी आर गोइंग टू एक्सप्लोर द बिरला इंडस्ट्रियल टेक्नोलॉजिकल म्यूजियम एट कोलकाता एंड वी आर इन्वाइटेड टू दिस सेमिनार बाय डॉक्टर Swati Mohan is a young Indian American aerospace engineer who had skillfully landed the spacecraft after a 7 month please welcome us in joining in welcoming Mr. Juan Clark public diplomacy officer and assistant director American Center Kolkata We welcome you sir I now request one of TK Sengupta. Can we have a round of applause? Please? And now, Vitas, we want to share her journey. We want to. Hopefully, we'll be getting a mesmerizing, uh, thrilling, and uh, experience through our talk. Uh, I just uh, want to brief uh, BIT because all of you know about him. So let me brief a little bit of our museum. This is the oldest science museum of our country. Uh, 1959, second May, we started this journey, and because of the success of this museum. government of india started thinking of setting up a body and making more science centers so national council of science museums formed in 1979 and then lot of science centers coming up and the mission ma'am is our uh, prime minister's mission is in 2047 that is 100 years of our independence a state of india should have a science center working at nasa in different projects now works at nasa's jet propulsion lab and then she's back in india again so it's a full circle uh of the connections that the us and india share at very deeper levels also from the government perspective nasa has been cooperated with isro more and more increasing i love everything about space and i like working in space and working with space Um, but more importantly from that, I am an engineer, and what that means to me is that I like humans with me. I was born in India, uh, raised in uh, America, but have one foot in each culture, coming back and forth. And now that I'm all grown up, I am a wife and a mother. I have two young daughters, actually, probably. So. And talking about my life journey, I frame it in terms of advice. I have three big pieces of advice. Uh, looking back on my journey of what it, what I think was helpful to me to get to where I am, and I'll go over a little bit more detail of each of these as I talk. Uh, but the first one is to really uh, know who you are. That I had no idea what I wanted to do. Nice. Um, is actually somewhere in between. So when I saw Star Trek: The Next Generation, I was still what was happening in the storyline here, uh, and these people were getting to fly or getting to go to places that ignited a spark. Now to do everything about space, it's actually not, and I point that out because though I saw the episode and I enjoyed space, looking back, that's the moment that I can remember. actually thinking about oh space is cool but it was a very slow realization it was very uh, intermixed with it and everything else i played with my dolls i played jump rope outside i played with my friends this was just another thing that seemed when i got a chance i would read about a book or space or watch a science fiction uh, television show it started to always to being a doctor i tried working at the hospital i tried shadowing my mom Um, it didn't come easily to me. Uh, I had my first dissection lab in school, and the smell from the formaldehyde of the machines were really nauseous, and I got sick, and I had to leave the, the classroom at the end of the dissection. Um, memorization of all the parts of a cell was really difficult to me, but 
I had said I wanted to be a doctor, so I was really trying hard at that point. Uh, and then in 11th standard, physics class in high school. And here's where it matters. Uh, my physics teacher was actually trained as an engineer. He was a really good teacher. And for the first time in his class, uh, I understood what physics meant. And compared to the struggles that I'd had in biology, physics made sense. I loved the fact that it was one equation. You didn't have to memorize anything. If you understood that one equation, then you could figure out the rest of it. So that started to plant the seeds of doubt um, that maybe there's maybe there's something else that I'm better at that I should try for this medicine route. Uh, later that same year, I had the opportunity to go to. How many of you have heard about the U.S. Space Camp? A few. So Space Camp is like a week of pretending that you're an astronaut, learning about space history and, and different space phenomena like black holes and planets, and then you spend the afternoon in um, mock-ups and astronaut training and, and pretending to be in mission control and pretending to be uh, an astronaut in these different facilities. It was so much fun. But the moment that actually made it real was in one of the, the jobs in, uh, in the sessions, uh, they had us pretend to do a mission and one of the rotations was in mission control. I remember going into mission control, uh, putting on the headset and, and opening the binder and of all the places, there was something that felt real about it. And there was suddenly actually a job that one can do, that one can aspire to. And that started tipping me from going into medicine to maybe I should, ex and now I start to understand that there are jobs there, jobs that, are, what it means to actually have a job in aerospace engineering. I switched switched wholesale in 11th standard I've been to trying to do aerospace engineering. We had very slow dial-up at home, but I tried to research different opportunities. I found one at Goddard Space Flight Center for two weeks, uh, and as part of those two weeks, they uh, appealed to me. So my undergraduate research uh, was in a CubeSat, which was just starting at that time, basically a shoebox-sized um, satellite that you could build as a student that came with all uh, different parts and you could launch them and, and have do science. So this was uh, an example of the one that we built. It was very tiny, only 10 centimeters across, about this big. It pointed downward, which we actually ended up using uh, a boom like this. Uh, one of the other projects that I did was um, with Kennedy Space Center early on. I thought, oh, maybe if I had like biology, I should try to do something space biology and kind of mix both worlds that I thought I was interested in. I very quickly learned that I do not care about plants as much and that was not a, a good fit for me at all. Um, and then I exploration portion of that, the figuring out how to get somewhere that no one had ever been to before. That really appealed to me, so I had a big check mark that I, oh, I love this place. And then I worked on, uh, I worked on Mars, which maybe you think this relates um, later in joining Mars, but actually I did not have a good experience that year because my entire internship uh, was combing through a series of these pictures. And if you guys see these tiny black lines on these pictures, my entire internship was counting the black lines one pixel by pixel. Every pixel, putting them in a spreadsheet, copying it over, and going through hundreds and hundreds of those. It's not very fun, and very monotonous, and by the end of the summer I did not like Mars at all, unfortunately. Um, 15 years later, I found out that this was actually a very useful project because those dark streaks that I had no idea what they were, were called recurring slope minae, um, and they were part of the proof uh, that scientists use that there's actually liquid water currently on Mars. Only for one year, but that was the year that Cassini reached Saturn and deployed the, pro the Huygens probe release. So, I was on this mission with people who had worked on it my entire lifetime, uh, and I came for the one year that it actually got to Saturn, which was a, a lot of luck. Uh, but after that, I worked on Grail, which was the first of a kind around the moon, um, Optiques, which was one of my favorite projects because it was my doctoral thesis come to life. Uh, unfortunately, it got canceled. It was a little too complicated the first time, so it never got to three, all of these within uh, two or three years. Uh, and then finally, I got placed on Mars 2020 um, in 2013 at the very early phases of Mars 2020. And uh, part of that was because um, I had mentors in my field who saw the capability. So I was still 
a little young for the role that they give me, but they intended it to be there for uh, a long time and to pick up as I go. So I was on my 2020 for eight years um, in almost the same role uh, throughout the entire time, which for nowadays generation seems like a lifetime. For eight years to, to stay on the same mission, same role, no promotions, no you know very small pay raises. Um, but in that eight years, working the entirety of the mission from, uh, it was just a piece of paper when I started, um, a blank sheet of paper when I started, to uh, landing on Mars, you built the technical expertise by seeing something all the way through. I helped design it, I helped write what it needed to do, and then I built it, and then I tested it, and then we launched and threw it. So getting that experience to do the whole process really helped to focus the, the technical expertise and to get um, down to the nitty gritty, not just at the high level, but all the way down in, in getting the job done at the lowest level and seeing how that contributed to the higher level. Um, so this is my personal journey and it really took uh, at every step, at every hardship, whether it was deciding what to go into in terms of major and undergraduate, to figuring out what I liked before uh, I even really appreciated what I liked, um, and being honest with myself of what I was good at, what I wasn't good at, and using that to pick the next opportunity, using that to pick the next path uh, before I landed where I did. It wasn't that I had this in mind, uh, that particular mission or that particular role, but it came through um, the journey and being honest with myself of who I was uh, and what I was interested in, what I was good at, in picking those things that were honest to who I was um, that eventually led me to being in mission control on landing day. Um, I was very lucky in that my parents were super supportive of uh, anything education related. Um, their ability to send me to space camp when I was young uh, was a huge gift because it was quite expensive and we weren't all that well off. So it was a it was a hardship, but they prioritized that and it changed my life. Who will uh, support you, support your dreams, not belittle them or not look down on them or not tell you not to aim for something that you want, even if it may seem like you're trying to reach for a distant galaxy out of this world. Uh, the true friends that you'll have are the ones that will encourage you um, with a bit of realism and help you uh, in being able to, to find the motivation and find the goals that you want to do. Uh, because you know that it'll be met with uh, support and not rejection. So the final thing is to actively do your best. I'm sure you all get advice of work hard and do your best and try harder. Um, this one has a little bit of a nuance to it because I know everybody will tell you to, to work hard. Uh, but what I mean by actively do your best is uh, look at what you want to do and take the initiative. Not all doors are marked very clearly with if you want to do X, then you have to go through door Y or uh, it's not very clear to get from one spot to the next spot what the path is. So part of it is taking the initiative to find your own path, asking for something that you think you may want, even if you don't know what what the reward you'll get out of it immediately is. Um, one of the examples of this is when I had that first internship at Goddard Space Flight Center, um, my actual internship was uh, to do CAD design. They had given me a stack of papers of mechanical drawings and I had to convert them into the, the computer. That was the entirety of the internship that they had planned for me. Uh, but as the other interns and I were walking around, we noticed a flyer that was posted up on the wall by the cafeteria that they were having a model rocket competition. So the other interns and I, uh, we were very spread out. We didn't live close to each other. So we went to the, to the advisor and asked if we could enter the model rocket competition. Not that we were asking for his permission, but we just wanted to use, our intent was to just use the, the office for an hour after work so that we could coordinate. He got super excited when we asked him. Much more excited than we expected him to be and actually became our mentor. He immediately drove us to the store to buy parts for the model rocket. He took us down to the machine shop and taught us how to uh, build the nose cone and how to shave the mechanical. It, we had never anticipated that he would get that into it, that he would actually um, allow us to spend 
most of our internship time working on this project instead of what the original goal was. But that experience was pivotal to be able to build this rocket, even though it was, it was a tiny rocket, it wasn't that big, it was only about this big, and it only went up maybe 10, 15 feet. But the process of building it, the process of seeing it launch, something that we had built, seeing it launch, was enormously inspiring. And that, that feeling of being able to see that, that's what stayed with me. That and the realization that that's what I liked, the, the satisfaction of seeing it work after I had built it, that part of it was what stayed with me. Eventually, I understood that to mean that I liked building things, I liked being an engineer, but that realization came later. It was the, the instant um, gratification of seeing it work that, that stuck by me. Second, um, in undergraduate, I was working on the satellite design project, um, and there was an opportunity for a conference that came up. At this time, undergrads were not expected to do any papers or conferences, and I went and asked the advisor if I could participate, and he was shocked. He was like, oh, I hadn't even thought about that. They couldn't find a reason to not let me go. Uh, so he agreed, and I was able to go prepare a poster and, and present it. Not that it was a groundbreaking poster or that it was um, changed the world in any, in any such way, but it was an opportunity. Uh, it was practice of being able to put together a poster. It was practice in order to stand next to a, a poster and give a presentation. And that practice on a small scale, because it was a really small conference, the practice was crucial because the, the research was small at this point, the conference was small, the stakes were very low. To be able to get that practice in this setting allowed me to build the skills that when I needed them later, I would have in my back pocket. It also gave me a, a publication credit then which showed up uh, on my resume that then caught the eye of recruiters. So it became a snowball effect, right? One small thing of asking uh, for something allowed me to get this publication credit that then led to the next credit and next experience from one that I asked for um, without having any expectations of, of needing it to happen. Uh, the other one uh, is kind of a different perspective. So uh, as part of my PhD thesis in working on spheres, I was one of the people who got to go and train the astronauts. Uh, and one night we were having dinner with one of the astronauts and he said, wouldn't it be a great idea if we could use these satellites not just for your lab at MIT, but open it up to all kids, very big ass, and a very broad goal. But, you know, it sounds interesting to, so let's see what we can do. because. He wanted to be able to open it up while he was on the space station to work with kids of uh, all different age levels. Um, so this was towards the very end of my PhD program. Um, so we worked with my advisor and we started a pilot program with two high school students, two high school clubs uh, to see if it could actually work, to see if we could get um, high school level students to actually code and what would it look like to give them a problem, what support would we need, how would they communicate with the space station, and could we make it into a game? for that, write any papers on it. That will support you and your interests uh, to help keep you motivated. Uh, seek out the opportunity to um, follow the questions of what's interested to you, uh, focusing on what your interests and skills are. Uh, and then finally, don't give up. It's a long journey. You may not see what the end goal is, but as long as you keep moving forward and keep persevering, then uh, you will go far. Just a final couple pictures from launch landing and then finally talking to uh, President Biden at the end of one, which I definitely could never have imagined when I was a child. With that, thank you, thank you. any questions? We are the only, in every way, is probably very small given the size uh, and time of the universe. Uh, I just like to ask, like, uh, what uh, what would it be like to emigrate to the U.S.? Um, so there is a lot, depending on where you go in the U.S., uh, especially if you go to postgraduate uh, education in, in the U.S., there's actually a lot of support for uh, foreign residents and postgraduate uh, in, in the graduate level. So there's specific organizations actually broken up by you know culture or for foreign nationals uh, in the postgraduate or uh, even like Indian nationals are generally a um, a club or an infrastructure at every university for those foreign nationals. And they really 
help provide that support system, right? So they, they become your friend circle and they can help with anything from picking up from the airport or uh, figuring out visa things and, um, you know, joint shopping trips to get groceries. Uh, I, I didn't necessarily have that experience, um, but it's similar in living alone because where I went to school, I didn't have any family um, where I went to school, so it's a similar experience if you rely on the, the friends that you have um, that you make at the college to become your support system and everything from having dinners together and studying together to you know exploring together. They, they really form your support system, helping to find a job, going shopping for uh, interview clothes or resume building. Um, at each university, you can generally find a group that's set up to you then, and you'll find your niche in that group to provide that home away from home to you. Thank you. Favorite country, India or America? Well, you can't ask the parent what their favorite child is. Either can do it. I will get hurt. I both equally. And your journey? Can you emphasize on some hardships you might have faced in your journey? Yeah. So one of the worst ones in technology high school, that's uh, before I was in high school actually when I was gone there, uh, and for our local area, that was the best high school. If you wanted to do anything science, different places where they apply to in, in space exploration. So I have friends who are, who are, in, who are trained as chemists or who are trained as physicists, who um, do like plasma flow, who are trained as biologists, who are trained in geology, who are trained in rocks. It really depends on what your personal interest is uh, and what type of um, field uh, interests you the most to determine where your best pages. All of these fields are important and they all serve, um, they all are different facets of serving to answer the same questions in different perspectives, right? The astrobiology or the search for exoplanets through astronomy, they're all eventually different ways of trying to piece together the question of whether we're alone in the universe. Uh, and all of those pieces are important because until we get the full picture, we won't be able to answer that question. So. Uh, I think they're all equally important, but more important is to find the one that interests you the most, uh, or uh, sparks your imagination the most, that's uh, tactical to find the right one. That's. Hardships are worth it. I, I think I would have to say a landing day for perseverance, mostly because um, out of all the different things that I've worked on or worked for, that has been the one that I have worked on with singular focus for the longest consecutive period in my life. Even even an undergraduate, that was only four years. Even graduate school, that was only five years, you know? Uh, but perseverance, to work eight years in a single role, in a single mission for one day, right? The entire eight years, we knew that we were gonna land on February 18th, to, to work that long and hard for a singular moment and then see that moment go successfully, that was an immense feeling of satisfaction. All right, thank you. Uh, just another question. So again, it's like you said, and who's your favorite child is, but uh, do you think uh, you would ever work for ISRO? <laughs> um, I would love to work in collaboration with ISRO. I actually asked when the NISAR project was being formulated to to see if I could get my uh, heels in to work on the NYSAR, but they wouldn't let me off of Mars 2020 at that time. So they said I had to finish, finish up Mars 2020. So maybe eventually, I mean, I think NASA uh, and ISRO are at um, the early stages of the collaboration. I think we're gonna see more collaboration between the two organizations going forward. Um, so I think there's great possibilities for future work between the two organizations. I don't know, that's all, thanks. Now, ma'am, how do you overcome from failures, or how do you deal with failures? Uh, because as we know, uh, success is a journey, not a destination. So, uh, failure is a constant companion. Yeah, failure is really helpful for. Um, most of the time, I, I go back and I, I talk to my family, and it's uh, helpful to, to talk it out, to express the feelings, um, and I rely on, on their feedback of, being able to remind me that one failure doesn't doesn't define my journey, um, that 
there's still value in what I do and, and use that as motivation to keep trying. Um, a lot of it has to be willing to take the introspection of, to understand what it was about that particular failure that um, maybe were mistakes that I made that I could do better. Uh, or even if I, it, it depends on what it is. Um, I would rather, I came to the realization, there's a, there's actually a quote that's the motto of JPL that is, I'm probably not gonna get it entirely correctly when I say this, but it's something to the fact that it's far, um, it's far better to uh, win glorious triumphs though checkered by uh, significant defeat than to live in the gray twilight of someone who knows neither victory nor uh, defeat. And that's basically saying, uh, Failure is hard to deal with, but regret is worse. So regardless of how bad the failure, I would rather have the failure and to know which side of the line I ended up on than to always wonder whether I could have done it or what that would have meant for my career to have done it. Mission, what are the probabilities of uh, colonization humans uh, species in the Mars in near future? That's an interesting question. I've actually been asked that a lot recently. So Perseverance's um, main objective was to seek the signs of past life on Mars. We need to make sure that Mars is that we send to Mars to make sure that we don't bring any sort of um, Earth to Mars. Because anything that we detect on Mars, we want to make sure that it's Martian before we detect. So things like um, Mars or not, we have to answer that question first before we do colonization. Because once we do colonization, uh, we will just let the pristine answer that question. So that's what the, I think we're focusing now on the first question of whether it is like on Mars. Maybe eventually we'll get, but um, those are in a little bit of conflict with each other. Hello ma'am. I just wanted to ask that, what are the main obstacles you have faced in the journey of a little girl to JPL. Journey of a little girl to, to JPL. Um, I would say for most of my early life, that there was not a place for me in engineering, or certainly not a place in field line controls, which is very math heavy. Uh, emails in my classes, which uh, was a little bit isolating. And, and having to keep going through that and keep pushing that to, to tell myself to go to the next level, even if that was the case, uh, took effort, took a lot of effort until I finally got to the point where I'm comfortable with my role and my job by um, my peers and any good support system. Hello, Mayor. And my question is, what is your first experience in working uh, for NASA? My first experience working was at the Goddard Space Flight Center. Uh, that's the one where I built model rockets. I was only in 11th standard then. It was only for two weeks, but uh, it was my very first time to walk on a NASA campus. Um, as, a, as someone who was working there, not as a, a visiting tourist, because we had visited some of the NASA centers when I was living. But when I was um, 16, I worked at job experience. Thank you so much, and thank you, Madam, for this session, and literally, inspiring us all to shoot for the skies. It's time for a uh, group photograph, so I would request Madam to please come within us and then we'll continue from there. Events and step-by-step -step venturing enable the organization of this event. We convey our thanks to all the participating students coming from Shantar School, Rishi Aurobindo, Malika Vidapit, the new moon, Ruby Park Public School, Naktala High School. this amazing interactive sessions we are going to visit the different galleries of the idea এইটাকে মকা বলা হচ্ছে কারণ এটা কোনো আসল কয়লা খনি নয় এটা একটা কৃত্রিম কয়লা খনি সাধারণত কয়লা মাইনিং হয় দুই ধরনের একটা হচ্ছে সারফেস আর একটা আন্ডারগ্রাউন্ড এটা হচ্ছে আন্ডারগ্রাউন্ড কয়কোল মাইন তো আমরা এখানে প্রথমে যেখানে দাঁড়িয়ে আছি এটাকে বলা হয় সেফটি কন্ট্রোল রুম 
কারণ এখানে যখন কোন মাইনাররা মাইনিং শুরু করে তার আগে একটা রুমে বিভিন্ন সেফটি অ্যাপারেটাস গুলো রাখে আমরা এখানে দেখতে পাচ্ছি একজন কোন মাইনার মাথায় হেলমেট মুখে মাস্ক এখানে চেস্ট গার্ড নি গার্ড মাইনিং শুরু করে আছে এখানে একজন বসে আছে কানে একটা ইয়ার হেডফোনের মতো ইয়ারমাফ দিয়ে এটা ব্যবহার হচ্ছে কোন বিভিন্ন আওয়াজ থেকে বাঁচার জন্য যেহেতু অনেক তলায় মাইনিং করা হয় তো বিভিন্ন যন্ত্রপাতি আওয়াজে কানের পর্দা ফেটে যাওয়ার চান্স থাকতে পারে তার জন্য এই ইয়ারমাফটা ব্যবহার করা হয় এখানে আছে বাদ রিভাইভিং কেজ এটার কাজ হচ্ছে যে যদি কোল মাইনিং এ কোন বিষাক্ত গ্যাস থেকে থাকে সেটাকে ডিটেক্ট করা এর ভিতরে একটা মুনিয়া পাখিকে রাখা হয় এবং মাইনিং শুরু করার আগে মুনিয়া পাখিটাকে ছেড়ে দেওয়া হয় যদি মুনিয়া পাখিটা বেঁচে আসে তাহলে জানা যেত যে মাইনিংটা সেফ আছে তারপরে মাইনিং করা যেত কিন্তু মুনিয়া পাখিটা যদি মারা যেত তাহলে জানা যেত যে মাইনিংটা সেফ নয় তাই ওখানে মাইন করা যাবে না এছাড়াও এখানে আছে কার্বন মোনোক্সাইড ডিটেক্টিং টিউব মিথোনোমিটার অ্যানিমোমিটার আর এখানে বিভিন্ন ধরনের অক্সিজেন সিলিন্ডার আছে
ফুটবল খেলতে বসেছে ঠিক আছে ওইদিকে একটু
আপনার কম্পিউটারে হয়ে গেল